Hello, everybody. Good day and welcome to the June 16th meeting of the Westford Budget Task Force. Um, I'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Welcome all. Let me just take a look and see if there's anyone joining us uh, on the attendee side. I don't see anyone yet, but uh, if people do join uh, or they're viewing this later, uh, you're very welcome to come uh, and observe our meetings or uh, see the recordings anytime. Uh, if you Google Westford Budget Task Force, you'll uh, get to a link that uh, will take you to the web page for this, where all the meetings are handily uh, posted for everyone to see. Uh, first up, um, we can discuss the minutes. I don't know if any, anyone has any comments about the minutes before we approve them. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. And a second. second. Great, all in favor? Just raise hands. Thank you. Okay, um, so today we're gonna go through a few things, obviously on the agenda. Uh, I'm also hoping that um, if we are in agreement, uh, at least tentatively on an outline in the arc, that we could actually uh, form up some work teams. So I'll come to that uh, a little bit later, but um, actually I'll just mention them now. So you can be thinking in between now and the time that we come back to this, if there's one of these that calls out to you uh, I think what we'll try to do is is split up so there's I guess two of us on each of these. Um, it seems like if we go through the outline, uh, there's sort of five groupings that could naturally form some sub teams to do this work. Um, one is benchmarking, so uh, completing the benchmarking analysis, looking for anything that uh, that looks different or, or out of step with Westford, um, and uh, we can discuss uh, more sort of what will be included there. But that'd be one group. Uh, another group might look at efficiencies. So some of those may fall out of um, the benchmarking, but also it'd be an opportunity to go to all the budget, all the uh, department heads and ask for their input with some opportunities that might, um, uh, we might identify that might lead to some cost savings. Third group might be budget challenges. Um, so we have a list of those in our outline, some of the things that we think are gonna jump in cost in, in a way that's uh, much more aggressive than we've seen historically. Um, I think the deliverable there will be to get a, a number basically from each of these budget task force, a dollar number of what we think the impact would be, uh, but also just a description of what it is, because some of them uh, I think will require some uh, explanation to the public of about what these cost drivers are and why they're different than historic levels. Uh, another work group might be uh, impacts. So these, this would be something I think we'll come to a little bit later, which is if we are forced to absorb some of these cost increases in our uh, existing budget without a new source of revenue, um, what would some of those things look like? What would the impacts potentially be? Uh, and then the last is new revenue sources. Um, this would be, you know, basically taking a look at the uh, the opportunities. Um, I think the Hingham report did a nice job of outlining what many of those are. So that's a good good running start. Uh, but we we'll wants a team to take a close look at those and uh, help us understand them. So. Um, so anyway, in between now and the time we come back to that, if one of those calls out to you, uh, you'll have a chance to, to volunteer for one of those. Um, first up on our published agenda is looking at the comparable communities. Um, so thank you for um, pulling together the, uh, the spreadsheet stuff. Thank you, Jenny, for um, pulling down some of the school, uh, using some of the, the um, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education tools. Uh, to get some of the data there, it's very helpful. Um, I guess the the discussion topic is: Are, are we ready to decide um, that we've identified the uh, the comparable communities correctly that we want to go ahead and do benchmarking with? Um, I think the school uh, set is pretty well defined. the The school committee has set um, the benchmark set as being the DART uh, districts. The the districts that are um, identified as being comparable by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, plus um, a geographic group, which are basically the towns that are adjacent to uh, Westford. Um, that's the, the set that they've done a lot of their um, benchmarking and analysis with regards to different uh, compensation issues and other things. So I think that that's a, uh, probably a good one for us to continue with because that's the one that um, that's already in motion. Uh, I guess more. Yep. I just have a question, quick question on that. Um, and I think it's probably for Chris and Valerie. Um, 
Does the WEA agree to that list? I just want to know where we're starting from. So we've we've shared this information with WEA um, with throughout our current um, negotiation process. Uh, it wasn't what was used previously, um, but it's what we've been talking about all year, and that's where we're that's where we're looking at our um, target information. Uh, we haven't asked them to specifically uh, comment or to vote to agree to it. Um, mm -hmm. it and I, they we're actually not required to, um, but it has been something we've been collaboratively talking about with them. So I feel like it's a, it's a known, it is a known uh, uh, benchmarking set, if that answers your question. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to know where we're starting from as far as are we going to run into issues if we use that list and somebody comes up and says we never agreed to that or whatever, but okay. Yeah, and I'll just remind everybody that this isn't a uh, an executive session, so uh, anything related to a union negotiation um, sort of needs to only be addressed in an executive session, so. Um, why don't we. Uh, I guess, Dan, do you want to just pull up the list just, just for people to see what those are? Just let's do the schools first, because I think there may be a little bit more discussion around what the town is going to use on the municipal side. Did we decide how many benchmarking towns we wanted to use yet? Um, no, that's part of this discussion, too. So um, I think we want to be cognizant that it does add somewhat to the work, but... Um, yeah, I don't know what the we right have, balance is of having too many versus too little, but. Um, so here you can see the, uh, the what the Westford Public Schools are using now. Um, I don't know if there's any discussion there, but just, just so people can put their eyes on them if they haven't seen this list before. I guess just to, to Chris and, and Valerie, can you imagine any reason we wouldn't be using this list? Does it seem like the right list for the schools? Yes, it is the right list for us. I, I don't see again the the dart the dart districts that this is, I think I'd mentioned before too, this is the industry standard that we're that we're identifying. So the the vast majority of schools in the state use the DART information. And what we've learned is that um the vast majority of them also use a geographic component because the dark district has a variability to it um, each year. So that allows you to, to have both something that's more, um, more sustainable knowing that the dark districts can change over time. Yeah, I was just gonna add to that, that I mean, like the, the appeal is that it's a moment in time, but it could change. And the double-edged sword of that too is that because they continually update it, it does feel like, um, you know, as the town evolves, that this is who we're compared to, um, at least school-wise. Okay, uh, thanks for that. Uh, and please, uh, as as the speakers have, if you've got something to add, go ahead and uh, and just unmute and and say hi, uh, because in this view, I can't see everybody's hands. So, and we're going to be looking at documents a lot. So, feel free to jump in. Okay, uh, on the town uh, of Westford side, on, on the municipal side, um, so we do have a list of towns that uh, emerged through some sort of study or compromise over a fairly long period of time. Um, there's a bunch of towns on this list. I think the question for us and for the um, uh, for the public is, is this the right list? Um, are we would we do better to have something that was sort of a rules based list like a like a geography list that we draw a radius and everything that touches or is within the radius uh, it counts as um, counts as the uh, the right well in the towns Kristen I'll I'll wait until you're done if you're not done yet. Um, well I, th I think that's that's the discussion here is um, what is the right list for the towns I, I don't think there's a standard like Department of Revenue recommended set. I think maybe we thought there, or at least I thought there was, but it doesn't seem like there is. So it seems like it'll be really up to us to pick what we think both will give us the most information, but also, um, you know, has a has a transparency to it about how it was selected for the public. 
Right. So my understanding is um, the column to the left under town of Westford are the uh, communities that the town of Westford has used in benchmarking itself related, relating to classification and compensation for our union and non-union employees. Um, the column to the right that says abutting communities are additional communities that touch the town of Westford. So uh, you'll see Chelmsford and Acton are in the, the list to the left, um, Carlisle through Tingsboro to the right. I think acting upon a geography uh, is a slippery slope because as you'll see, uh, Carlisle, Dunstable, Groton, Littleton and Tingsboro are all quite smaller than the town of Westford, um, have different services. So um, my recommendation is we stay with the column on the left and or bring in some additional comparable communities that are similar in government formation and similar in size population. Um, so I guess if we pick this list, it would seem to me that just, just as you just described, Kristen, we would have to basically present a logic for why these towns are appropriately, appropriately comparable. So if it, if it is that they fit within some range of size, they have a similar government, they provide similar types of services. Um, you know, I think that could be, that could be a reasonable logic. We may want to also, you know, compare, um, there's a whole bunch of different data points we could compare to establish that this, this makes sense. Um, do other people have input? I mean, I think it's a little bit of homework to take this list and then screen it based on some of the metrics that Kristen just identified. Um, I, I think Kristen has a good, Point on the uh, sorry. Go ahead, Erica. No, okay. the the um, the we do want to make sure that the I, the towns on the list are similar in services or demographics or whatever it is that will affect the budget. Um, I do see some value also in having abutting communities because that's who we compete with for staff. So on that particular measure, staff salaries. Um, I don't know if abutting communities is necessarily the only way to go about that, but just keeping in mind that um, we we would want to make sure that we're we're uh, able to compete well, um, and there may be more than one way to do that, whether it's abutting communities or not. But I can see the value of supplementing a list of towns that look like us with a list of staffing similar. Um, towns or or competing towns. Thanks, Erica. I think I heard another voice. Uh, yeah, that was, that was me, Christine. I think my screen may have frozen, but um, I guess the the town list is is pretty large. Um, so I I'm a little concerned about trying to benchmark for that because as I was going through some of the data that um, Dan pulled out into a spreadsheet and had some questions for him, we kind of realized that the numbers in those spreadsheets um, may not, we may not really be able to rely on them because each community sort of buckets things a little differently. Um, and so it's not an apples to apples comparison. So we may end up going through every single budget and this is a long list to, to really try to dive in and then do that with. So that's number one. Number two, if this list has been used for union negotiations for however many years, as much as I would like to change the list, I'm a little concerned about that. And I'm not exactly sure how I feel about it yet, but just kind of wanted to point that out. Um, third thing is... I know I just said that the list is very long, but um, I'd kind of like to throw out adding Shrewsbury to the list and a couple of reasons why. Number one, I feel like they're somewhat comparable in demographics, even though they're a little bit larger. Interestingly enough, I'm pretty sure they're on Acton Box Rose Dart list. So I don't understand why they don't end up on ours, but I'll you know leave that as a question. Um, and because Kristen was with the town, was with Shrewsbury for so long, I just sort of feel like it might be interesting to hear her comparison and, and um, insight. You know, there may be interesting things that um, she could bring to the table if we have Shrewsbury on the list. Okay, yeah, I think that's an interesting, interesting perspective. Are we thinking that we're gonna benchmark a separate set of towns for school information? 
versus a separate set of towns for the like town budgetary information? Or were we thinking of condensing it into one list that we would utilize for all purposes? Uh, Shannon, I think the, the thinking was that we probably would have two. Um, and the, uh, I think the reason is that um, I think we know that best practice is to use the DART plus geography, as, as Dr. Chu mentioned. Um, but I'm not sure that those towns represent the most similar in terms of town services and in terms of town makeup. It's the, it's the best for the schools, but I think the thinking was that we would have two different lists, basically. Mm -hmm. um, Tom, if I, if I could just quickly answer um, Christina's question about why Acton Boxborough would be on our list, but Shrewsbury would not be. Um, I actually remember the very first time I looked at DART districts years ago, even looking at MCAS data, I was surprised by that too. When DESE creates the matrix that they compare us to, we, we fall in the middle of the matrix. And so therefore there are communities that then will not be on our list that will be on somebody else's list because then they're, 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 they, they combine, everybody has a list of 10 and that list of 10 is not always the same based on where your data falls in that spectrum. Great, thanks Dr. Chu for that. Um, well, it sounds like we want either this list or some maybe tweaked version of this list. Uh, maybe the benchmark uh, benchmarking group um, that forms one of the actions they could take on, or, or we can talk with Kristen and Dan and see if they've got a way that they'd like to do this. I, I do think we'll have to have some explanation for why these are um, comparable. And it could be that we look at sort of size. Um, we could look at, uh, you know, any kind of economic data. We could look at uh, structure. So um, I don't know if we want to sort of brainstorm that right now, but I think uh, either the benchmarking team or um, Kristen and Dan, uh, it would just be good to sort of identify a couple factors just so we can make the case that there's a rationale for it and, and you know, these fit within the rationale. And in that process, we may find that um, some sort of don't fit and we want to take them out. Um, and I think it's okay if we're using a different list for the benchmarking than we have for the for the salary negotiation, that's sort of a negotiated list that emerged over a long period of time. Um, and so um, if they're if they're slightly different, I think it's more important that we've got a clear explanation for why they fit than, uh, than they're exactly the same. Okay, um, so why don't, we, why don't we put a pin in that for now? It, it looks like we'll be sort of starting with that list, but, but maybe tweaking it or editing it a bit. Um, Next up is the uh, proposed changes to the outline of the report. Um, and if you could just bring the outline up, um, maybe we can just put eyes on that for a bit. So this is uh, the outline that Erica is working on for the past week. Do we want to discuss this one or the start with the, the original? Um, why, don't we, why don't we take a look at uh, Erica's? I think a lot of the, the items that were on the original are all represented here as well. I didn't remove things. I just kind of categorized them differently and supplemented them a little bit. Do you want me to walk it through? Yeah, why don't, why don't you just take it through, take us through, Erica, and thank you for, uh, for putting the time to sort of further develop this. Sure, sure. Um, so, you know, and I also uh, did use some of the, the ideas that were on the Hingham, as you can see right there in the methodology. So that also informed um, how I put the structure together. But um, basically, I started off just really with the introduction, um, which I think is the same as what was on the previous one. The methodology used is the one of the items that I inserted just so that I think as you were alluding to, Tom, um, that we need to inform the public as to why we show, chose a certain market basket of communities for both the schools and the town. We want to explain to them why it is that we approached certain things certain ways um, and just give our rationale. So if there are any concerns, then the community can, can voice them. But, you know, we're being upfront. And also by doing this, um, we can get in our own mind how we're approaching the issue and um, you know, just to make sure both that we're on the same page, but also it allows people to have ideas and say, okay, well, maybe we can do it this way or that way. Um, 
So, um, and then we can scroll down. Um, then getting into the background, which is also a lot of what was on the original. I really didn't change that very much. Um, that's pretty much what was on the on the original, just saying, you know, we're going to look at our census data, um, our existing revenue and expenses. Um, so you can keep scrolling because it's the same. Um, and a lot of these questions were the same. What are the challenges are also here? Um, you can keep going. And then this is the part that's also new, the, the analysis part where we where we analyze where we are. So we say, okay, this is the methodology. And then this is the part where we apply the methodology. And we say, okay, first we have to understand what's the size of the gap, you know, how, how big an issue do we have? And then, you know, here's where we go through the projections. And the projections are harder than history, right? Because, you know, obviously predicting the future isn't perfect. Um, so the you know the size of the budget gap we we talk about our methodology and our projections and then we talk about opportunities and this is where we can say you know we might gain revenue here or there um also opportunities and expenses where might we save money um we go through our market basket of communities and see what they told us um and then we come up with the budget scenarios where we're applying the process for coming up with the scenarios that we explained up above. And I think we're supposed to come up with five. So that's why I listed five. Um, and then hopefully out of that will logically come some recommendations. So that's that's pretty much what I did. It's really just kind of rebucketing, but the two big things that I added were a section on methodology. So we explain what we're doing and analysis so we can apply that explanation about what we're doing and, and show how we did it. Yeah, I think those are very valuable ads. And um, I'll mention as we go through this, if we find that um, there is some aspect of the work that we think could be done um, differently or more effectively than what's in the charter, we can go back to the select board and, and ask for an amendment. So um, it could be that five is exactly the right number of scenarios, but it could be that once we get into the work, um, it doesn't sort of fall together that way, or it could be that the, the five-year time frame outlined in the scope um, we may find that we've got a full plate just getting through the next couple of fiscal years. So um, just just a point that we, um, if we think that there's something that's that's sort of better than what's outlined in the charter, uh, we can certainly uh, pursue that with the select board. Any any feedback for Erica? Um, I, I think this is looking looking great and very much along the lines of what we need to to present back to the town. Um, but any any augmentations or questions that people have? This can be a living document too. We we don't need to freeze this. I think we just want to get to a point where we feel like we're at a good point to start to actually go do the research and do the work. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you Erica. Any other? So I mean, Christina, from the from sort of the finance committee point of view, uh, is there anything that you think we may want to add to this, or do you feel like it covers it pretty well at least for now? This point it covers it well I think um you know obviously things may pop up as we do our research but I, I think this is a fine place to start okay uh great well why don't we uh why don't we hold on that then for now uh as well um next up is the draft timeline uh, I have a feeling if uh, Dan brings it up it may be a little bit hard to see so I'm gonna get my reading glasses on but maybe if you could just bring it up Dan and walk through what's on there and then uh, we can open up for comment. Oh, that's plenty big. Zoom right in. Um, so yeah, this is our first shot at uh, coming out with the timeline. We can obviously change this. Uh, we have been meeting on Wednesdays at 1230. Uh, I don't know if that time works for people moving forward, but um, I kind of like the Wednesday meetings in the middle of the week rather than on Friday, but that's just me. Um, so we covered the first two meetings and we have today's meeting. Uh, we're meeting on Wednesday. We already posted that, um, so uh, that meeting is set. Thank you all for getting back to me. Uh, and then basically, I, I just add weekly meetings from here on out, just so we save the dates. I figure if we want to take a week in between and meet two weeks in the future, that's fine, but at least we have the, the dates and times um, reserved for now. Um, so besides the, the meetings uh, for this group, um, I add some of the uh, financial 
uh, dates in here as well that we use like the, the FinCom timeline. So on July 14th, that's statutorily, it's actually the 15th, but it's Saturday. It's the last day that any warrants can be processed. So um, that being said, uh, Jeremy, who, I don't think we introduced Jeremy yet. Jeremy Healy, he's our uh, assistant town accountant and finance and budget analyst. He's gonna be helping a lot with the, um, you know, the, the budget process this year. And he's also gonna take notes for our Sterney's meeting. So thank you, Jeremy. Yep. And then, um, so Jeremy's gonna be updating the budget worksheets that week and getting them ready to send out to the departments, which is a lot earlier than we normally uh, would do so. Um, and then we're going to give department heads about three weeks to get those back to us so we can start reviewing those budgets and vetting them so we have uh, more solid information for this group. Um, by the end of July, we should have the final uh, state aid figures for FY24. Uh, again, we're usually working with incomplete information for that. Um, Governor Baker always waits to the last possible minute. I'm not sure what Governor Healy will do with that, but uh, we still need that uh, finalized. Uh, again, uh, uh, on August 2nd, we're going to start meeting with department heads and going over those, uh, the uh, the budgets and hopefully have something within about, I'm sorry, August 14th, and hopefully have something wrapped up by uh, September 8th so we can adjust our, our numbers with a, a more accurate budget for the five-year uh, forecast. So on here, we said we were going to have a couple of public forums as well. I threw out a date of Wednesday, August 9th for our first one and a second one on Wednesday, September 13th, so about a month apart. So it gives us some time to get some information ready uh, during July to present during that forum. I'm not sure how people feel about those dates. I know we have people on vacations and aren't always around during the summer. Yeah, and what's the difference for the yellow lines? Did I miss that? Oh, um, these were actually a couple of meetings uh, that one, Kristen won't be here, one, I won't be here. So oh, okay. I was just highlighting those for our, our draft timeline. Okay. I, I am taking one week off this this summer, that's it. No. <laughs> uh, um, so Dan, so just a quick, in terms of um, when the public forums are, maybe we can do today is just make sure we've got all the right things on here and then we can sort of check schedules with people and, and look at where they might move them. But I think this is a great first cut. Um, okay. But I, I think it may be a little bit complicated to select the timing without doing a doodle poll. Yep. Okay. Um, and going forward um, in September, the select board uh, and finance committee actually usually review the uh, budget policy. FinCon makes suggestions first historically and then sends it on to the, the select board. Um, then we're going to have um, the special town meeting warrant closes on September 27th. Uh, end of September, we usually have our free cash certified uh, in time for a special town meeting. And then by October 2nd, that's when we're shooting to have our uh, first report due. That's actually a Monday. Uh, the, the first was a Sunday, so I bumped out a day. And then, of course, um, once we do present that initial report, uh, we get into budget season soon thereafter. We have a special town meeting on the 17th. Um, we're working on the budget up and through uh, December 12th when we have uh, scheduled the initial budget presentation uh, from town manager. We usually have our budget review hearings in January and beginning of February, and that's on the annual town meeting from there, which is March 23rd next year. Um, thanks, Dan. So just high level comments for Dan uh, or for the group about um, what you see here. And, and I'll come back to some of the things that are called out on the agenda too, in, besides public engagement. Um, having, I think having two open forums is a good idea. I don't know how people feel about it. two as a number. I don't think it can be fewer than two, but it could be more. Let's just open I for think comments. The, for a few seconds. the initial on. thought process on two, and I think I agree with you, Tom, we could certainly have more is the initial one would be for us to share information and gather feedback. And then once we have a little bit more concrete information and some suggestions that we run those suggestions back through the public again, to make sure that we are on the same page. Uh, but I could certainly see another session in there of the first session being more information sharing from, that the town is, and the committee is sharing with the public. Then the next is more information gathering from the public. And then the third is checking our work with the public to make sure we're not missing anything or that our assumptions are, are clear and, and on point. 
Yeah, I think that sounds great. Um, my general sense is we may want to move the first one a little bit earlier um, so we can get uh, sort of engagement input at the outline phase that we're at now. Uh, I think we, we don't want to wait to start working, but um, there may be, you know, feedback from the public about what needs to be covered in more detail or just general questions that might be very helpful for us to hear up front. Uh, any any general questions? Um, so I like the uh, uh, the list of things we've got here, the, the questionnaire. Um, in terms of public engagement, um, it seems like we want to have uh, both sort of a questionnaire that goes to our departments, which could address opportunities for efficiency, ideas that they may have. But then also it seems like there's some public outreach uh, or at least opportunity for the public to submit questions or concerns or, or ideas. Um, should we pencil um, in here? Yep. I just, I had a sort of a, a thought on that. Um, what do we think about having, whether it's um, it, just some way for whether it's department heads, staff, um, residents to send us either ideas or questions, not that we need to respond to them, but do we set up an email address or a form on our website? Um, I just think it might be a good way to sort of gauge the public and staff on what they're thinking about, what ideas they've got. We can sort of see where we need to maybe explain things more or research more or whatever, rather than having just the, the public forums, because some people may not be able to come to those. They may be limited. Um, some people may not speak up, uh, you know, having some sort of alternate way to at least just send us information, even if it's, we make it clear that it's kind of just one way we'll, you know, we'll acknowledge receipt, but you're not going to get a specific answer back or anything, but a way to let people do that. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And we discussed in a previous uh, meeting, kind of a virtual suggestion box, uh, which could just be a link on the, on the page. Uh, I did, I did look at the the web page earlier today is there a is there already a link there dan and Kristen, or is that something that we can uh we can get I don't down think it's been set up yet for the link okay but, um i'll work with mike wells and see if we can get that up and going a, yeah because i think form, a google go form might, i'm just thinking a google form might be a better thing that's going to collect the comments that then we could you know that that we could all view in you know when in in our shared drive where there was an Excel, it could turn into an Excel sheet. And it might help with Christina's point about people expecting a reply. Because if they fill out a Google form, I think they would they'd be more inclined to know that they're just sharing the information with us that then we're going to be reading. Whereas if it's an email address, there might be an expectation for there to be a, um, you know, a follow up. And I think that would be challenging for us to have to man the email like that. I've been checking um, some other communities and how they do sort of um, per participatory budgeting. And <clears throat> I've seen a range of either just share your comments or um, more specific questions about like what areas matter most to you. Um, and do you have, you know, like just a more of a survey type versus um, a, a blank uh, text box. And I've also, so I don't know, I'm not suggesting one or the other, I just think it's open to discussion. And then um, one thing too to consider is whether we um, consider having it, have the option for anonymity so that we can find out some of those, um, like you said, efficiency ideas or something without the thought of someone's name is attached to it. Yeah, I think that's a great idea too. Um, it sounds like maybe we need two things. We we need some way for people to submit ideas and suggestions, and we probably, uh, as part of this process, at some point are going to actively reach out to people and ask for their input on some some set of issues that we would define. Um, that goes back to the the Google form. Would you could do that where it doesn't collect email addresses, and then the last uh, the last box could be if you want to share your contact information with us. They could. Um, Chris, when you set things up the way you're describing, uh, what, what I'm thinking is um, 
there may be an occasion where we would not want everyone's submission to be viewable by the public. It, we might receive an inappropriate one. We might uh, receive one that contains confidential information, maybe unwittingly. Um, is, is it basically can people from the public see what's been submitted? No, away? it just go, it would just go in our OneDrive, so it would just be private to us. We can choose what we'd like to share in the future once we filter out that. It, it, the Google form really goes into an Excel spreadsheet, and then you can filter that spreadsheet further. Okay, super. Yeah, we could we could just make sure that you know a couple of people who have created the form have access, and then they just then send the 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 Excel sheet, put it into the drive, and then we're seeing it confidentially. I'd be happy to help in that too, if you need help, Dan. Sorry, folks, I disappeared there for a sec. Yeah, I think um, that seems logical to me to use a Google form if we're able to do that. And then that's true at the same time, to Tom's point, we could also then have specific surveys that we want people to, like you're, there's just the form that allows for feedback at any given time, but then we could also have very specific surveys where we're asking for, you know, uh, deliberate feedback on certain items. Okay, why don't we why don't we um, ask Dan and, and Mike Wells to take on the action item of setting up the Google Form, uh, just sort of rolling public comment uh, piece, and then Dan on your on this schedule, could we could we just go ahead and add some time? In July, and we can refine later exactly when it is um, some sort of public engagement survey. And obviously, we need to be thoughtful about how we design that and what exactly we're looking for. But I, I just want to make sure we're thinking on the timeline that that's an important thing to make sure we do. Um, I think the number of updates to the boards looks about right, at least to me um, here, which is great. Um, yeah, anything else people want to just get on the general uh, calendar, even if we're not picking a specific date, but just things that you think, major things you think should be on our roadmap here. I don't think it, um, I don't think it has to be reflected in here, but in case somebody opens it in our future meeting packets or something, um, is just to note that we could obviously change the time of the meeting if it's the public forum one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we could mark that as tentative if we decide to put this in the public share area. Um, so um, I think in a future meeting, maybe what we'll do is send out a doodle poll in advance and see who can be available when for these meetings, um, public forum in particular. I think we understand that people are gonna probably take vacation. So uh, people will miss various meetings uh, through the summer, but I think for the public forum, we'd like to get as many of us uh, there as we possibly can. And okay. Um, I, oh, sorry, Tom. I just was going to add to, um, I'd be happy to, like, I, I mean, I think we, I don't want to limit us to just some online public forums and maybe if it's more in the fall when we have sort of more, a firmer report to share, um, but to be open to sort of like an, an office hour at the library or something like that, or at this Cameron Senior Center and those kind of more um, in the public, in face-to-face -face ideas to uh, be open to supporting that. Yeah, no, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's very much what I was thinking is that it would be a face-to-face -face with a virtual option maybe, but um, you know, to the extent we can try to get as many people together to, to talk about this. Okay, well, Dan, I think this is a great, um, great first cut. So let's um, maybe during the week, uh, I'll take a, a close look at this and see if there's anything we need to, you know, investigate in terms of timing or other things. But I think that's a good, good first cut. Um, we want to take a look at the uh, website. Um, so I don't know, Dan, do you want to just pull up what it is quick, just so people can if they haven't looked at it, they just have got eyes on it. This is sort of a standard task force template that is on the town website. So nothing nothing too dramatic. Um, we talked about having the Google form submission. So that's something that we'll add. Um, 
I think the main, um, well, let's just, uh, let's open up and see if there are other things that people feel like we should um, make sure we have here to make it more engaging. Just just what it is, it's, it's got the people, it's got links that people want to send us individual notes. Um, it's got meeting minutes, it's got links to the, um, to the video presentations, uh, which I think is very helpful. Um, the related documents will we'll kind of build. That's um, at the end of each meeting, we'll talk about if there's something that we've presented or discussed that we wanna make sure we add to the public viewable space. So I think that list of documents will grow over time as we move further through. Um, Yeah, it's possible people uh, don't have a lot of comment on this. I think the main goal here is to make sure pe people can find it and people can get access to the information that uh, that we're doing and uh, and working through. So I think I think it does those things. Tom, one of the things that um, Dan and I talked with the internal team was um, Hingham had a really good video series about just uh, you know what is free cash or what is a fiscal year budget and things like that. Um, we're happy to work with our team on some just rudimentary um, fact budgets, uh, excuse me, fact of videos. Um, so if anybody has any suggestions on uh, things that they'd like to add to that, I'm sure Westford Cat would be able to help us with that. Um, and we could certainly link to certain uh, state dashboards if that's helpful as well. But we want to make sure that all of the documents that we're kind of working on in the background stay on our drive as draft. And then once they get finalized or published, they'd be put on this website. Yeah, I think that'd be great. And I think using videos is really helpful, in particular, uh, any kind of background or stuff that, um, like you say, are sort of fact based questions like what. Um, what are these different categories? What do they mean? How are they used? Um, so, uh, yeah, I think as we move, move through this and get questions from the public, we'll probably develop sort of an FAQ, you know, question list. And some of those I think will be really well addressed with the video and others we can uh, see if there's another way to communicate. Tom, there's a there's a really good video that um, Dan and Elizabeth Almeida did several years ago that show me the money. Might be worth putting a link. And the yep. uh, Department of Local Service, they have their YouTube channel. So, you know, if residents, they have questions about what's free cash, what's override, they have different kinds of videos, they can educate the public about those information. That's great, Jenny. Could you, Jenny, could you send a link uh, to, the, to that website, to the group? Sure, I just need to find it, spend some time. <laughs> yeah no problem, okay. no problem whenever you get a chance okay. the uh I, I think the idea of not reinventing the wheel is a great one so yeah. um the, the videos are really valuable but they do take um a surprising amount of time and effort yes. and so That's we, should just make, we should make sure that if it's important and westford specific that we're doing it but if there's something else out there we can we can tap into those as well um okay why don't we um go back to what i talked about at the beginning which is forming these work workshop teams he's working in teams um tom sorry just before you get going yep dan did you say that you were going to be doing a budget uh, meeting packet for this too it sounded like in the in one of the emails that you were going to use the document management system did that mean it's we're going to have our, a standing packet for this group or that it just would fit, feed to the website yeah it's um if you go and look up our budget uh there's meeting material so anything that i send out to you i do put in that dms so it's all public um, so if you want to look back at a document from a previous meeting, it, it's available online. So Dan, it. can you just put that up on the screen and walk some people through it? Cause they may not have, um, they may have never used that type of system before. Sure. Let me just get to a good spot here. Thank you. All right. So we're on the, the Western Mass homepage here. So if you go down here to meeting packets, this is where we store all the information for each of our boards when they hold a meeting. This is our document management system. Just go down here to uh, select a committee. And of course, there's no link to budget task force at this time yet. So that's broken there. So. Um, thank you, that, that, that was my case. question. I, that yes. was your question okay. then. Yes, yeah. thank you for pointing that okay. out. So we'll get that. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't, okay. 
Yeah, I upload the information. I'll just get that uh, uh, resolved with IT and we'll, we'll fix awesome. that today. Thank Thanks, you. Dan. Yep. Sorry, okay. Tom, go ahead. No, thanks. Thanks, Valerie, for pointing that out. Um, okay, so we uh, uh, sort of going through this, it seemed to me that we have sort of five buckets. Um, so benchmarking um, efficiencies, uh, budget challenges, so sort of a description of what the, the main drivers of our budget challenge are, the list that we already have in the outline. Uh, impacts, and that's... Um, Sort of leads into the budget scenarios. I think we can come back to that one because I feel like we'll we'll be able to approach that with more clarity once we have identified um, sort of what the dollar value of the budget challenges are. I think we'll we'll just have more information there. Um, and the new revenue sources. Uh, this would be I think taking the Hingham Group as a starting point and going through and identifying um, what's available, what kind of scope of impact they might have. Um, you know, any any challenges with implementing them, um, sort of laying out what those options are. So uh, I guess I'll start at the time, and the hope would be that everybody uh, here, if there are, let's see, there are 11 of us. So some of these maybe could be done with a single person, but it'd be good, I think, if we had, you know, at least two on each one of these. Um, if a, a bigger one might, uh, might require more. So uh, just starting at the top, is anyone particularly drawn to the benchmarking piece in terms of what their interests are? I guess we can do this this way, or we could also do this by email over the course of the next week. If people want to send like their top three or four that they would like, maybe we can use that as an input and, and then sort of allocate people. Maybe that's a little bit more sensible way to do it than do it here live. Uh, and I also just want to point out, um, so Dan and I were just reviewing open meeting law and how these breakout groups would work. So um, if it's just a singular person working on something singular, that's totally fine. If it's two people just researching certain documents and then providing it back to the group, that's fine. But if there's two or more people actually meeting and working on this, it might trigger the open meeting law. So if you have a question or you're concerned, just let Dan or I know and we can help flush that out. Um, um, yep. Can you speak a little bit more about the efficiencies and budget challenges buckets for you for your notes? Um, is one of those like reviewing current expenses? And yeah, so maybe I'll just start at the top and I'll, I'll explain sort of what I'm thinking for these. Um, that's a good good idea. And then maybe what we can do is um, people can send an email around with the ones that they're most drawn to, and then we can try to make sure we're allocating people uh, as I described. So. Um, I think benchmarking is just what it sounds like. It would be for the for the two different benchmark groups, uh, a clear explanation of why the benchmark group was selected, how it was selected, you know, a justification for why it's it's the most appropriate selection, uh, and then um, going through kind of the key budget categories. I, I think and looking at uh, in the end, you'd like to know where do we rank in terms of public um, safety, where do we rank in terms of um, Department of Public Works. Uh, I know it's a little bit messy and we may have to go in and, and you know, sort through the different uh, sort of financial budgeting choices, uh, accounting choices that different towns make. But in the end, end with, okay, here's how we position. Are we an outlier, you know, in any of these areas? Does anything spark, you know, an interest to look more closely? Um, so that's, that's, I think, benchmarking. That's fairly clear. The efficiencies I was thinking would be... Um, we do hope coming out of this, we could identify some things that we could provide the same or better service with less money. Um, the town has been working on a number of efficiency gains over time. So for instance, um, a number of departments were um, were consolidated or after some retirements that ended up being pretty efficient. At some point we decided we were gonna have um, um, sort of the, uh, some shared services across town and schools where there'd been individual before. And I think we ended up with a better level of service for everybody and, and it was a more efficient use. So it, it would be, I think, polling um, potentially other communities for things that they've identified that were particularly successful, um, talking with the departments and see what good ideas people have already. Um, some, some way to basically canvas and look for opportunities that um, might be smarter, better ways to do things. Um, than uh, that we're doing now. So I, I think that would be kind of survey and study, uh, maybe selecting a couple of the benchmark towns to do interviews with, uh, to see if they've identified things or experienced things that to generate efficiency for them. Uh, the budget challenges is, I think, 
um, sort of a collection and communication issue. So uh, I think we've identified the eight or 10 things that we think are going to be particularly challenging to budget for. Um, I think it'll be a clear explanation of, of sort of what the what it is and why it's sort of hit a discontinuity from history. Uh, so for waste, it would be, you know, our, our low bid for many years is retiring. We now need to bid this out in a different way. Here's what's going on in, in, in terms of tonnage and disposal costs. Sort of what's what are the factors behind it? Just so someone who's curious can can read it in, in a paragraph or two, understand why it's a challenge and why it's different from history. Um, and then also making sure we get a clear, as clear as we can, a number, whether it's a single number or range for each one of these, because in the end, we're going to have to tally it up and say, okay, if we pursue our you know, the guidance that we have uh, in terms of you know quantifying these things. So, for example, if we take as given that Westford wants to continue to pursue paying competitive salaries, we would sort of state that, come up with a cost related to that, um, and then in the end, we'll be able to look at a number and say, okay, this is the the, the numerical challenge here that we're trying to meet. Uh, Impacts, I think, will come later, but that would be basically if we had to absorb these all or part of this budget challenge number that we've identified, um, what would that look like? Just to give the public a sense, you know, what would it be like if we didn't have new revenue? Um, and again, I think we'll come back to that uh, after we've sort of fleshed the rest of these a little bit. Um, so I, I guess the, the point of that is I think really one, two, three, and five uh, impacts is, is for, I don't think we need to start working on the impacts right now. I think we can hold that for a bit. Uh, so the four we'd be looking to, to staff now would be benchmarking efficiencies, budget challenges. And then the last one is new revenue sources. And again, that's just an explainer about what are, you know, what are other towns doing to access revenue and what's the scope? So it'd be sort of, what is it? What's the range of impact it could have? So if you look at changing uh, bus fees or something, um, you know, you can identify what that is. You could have some way of knowing whether we're high or low relative to other communities. And then you give some sense of how big a, a bite that could take out of this budget challenge number. So some of the new revenue sources, uh, if you look at the Hingham study, a bunch of them were, that, you know, worthy of discussion, but the potential impact just wasn't that big. Uh, so we just want to have a sense that, you know, this is something that in best case will generate $20,000 of additional revenue. We probably should do it, or maybe we should consider it, but sort of, help understand uh, kind of where that sits in the overall solution scheme. <laughs> um, it doesn't have to be these uh, these four that we kick off. There could be others that people uh, see if they look at the outline, things that need to be pulled in. Um, what I was trying to do is figure out what requires research uh, because I think we'll come back to the report and there'll be a lot of sort of uh, document creation to do, but I think we can write the report after we've sort of got these little research bundles together and have thought about them together. Okay. Um, well, why don't I uh, do what I said and send an email out to the group um, and I'll just restate what these are and then ask people to, you know, rank their preferences of what they'd like to work on. And then we'll, we'll kind of bundle people up and, and let people know before the next meeting kind of um, who's working on what. We might be able to do that in a Google form as well. So um, it'll all just come to staff um, if people want to do that instead of email. So whatever the preference is. Does it does it make sense to um, just have like three words describing your best availability too? So we don't match up someone that can only work, can only, you know, work at, at night versus a different time zone? Yeah, I think that's a good thing to add. I think it's a good <laughs> Especially for Christina. Um, what what time is it? What time is twelve thirty for you? Six thirty in the morning. Okay. So Good a morning. little rough, a little rough, but not uh, not totally unmanageable. It's fine. Um, okay. Well, Kristen, maybe we'll chat and figure out how to the best way to put together the Google form where people can basically rank which ones they're interested in and say when they're available. Can I ask a really dumb question? Uh, sure. At the end of the day, who's going to write the entire documentation? Like, is each subgroup going to be responsible for their piece, or are we providing our piece to someone who's going to make sure it's written cohesively? Who's tasked with the like 
broader. Um, so there, there will need to be an editor who, who takes all the inputs. I, I think we'll try to share the work, but there'll have to be an editor that brings it together into some cohesive form. So I haven't, um, I wouldn't consider that actually to be in my wheelhouse. Is, I mean, I, I could certainly do it, but I'm not great at it. So maybe something else people can think of is um, as we move through this, if they are drawn to the work and, and have that talent, uh, we will need someone to put together. But I, I think that we will ask each group the next step after we kind of do this research will be to go back to the outline, see if we've learned anything that makes us want to change the outline, and then assign sections of the outline to the working groups and for them to actually flesh out into a document. So, and Dan and I talked about the, the drafting and the putting it together, and we're happy to do that on the town side because we have all the templates and the resources. So um, we can talk about it further if that's not the way the committee would like to go, but we're happy to do that. Yeah, I think I was somewhat just thinking about how everyone writes differently and send instruct. you know, just if we have 10 of us all contributing something, is it going to be choppy in a way? But right, we can figure that out later. I just was like, burning question are we how are we getting it all together yeah that's a good question and i think we'll we'll ask the different working groups to provide the content but yeah it'll need it'll need to read like it was written by a single author in the end um are people comfortable staying on that we have just a minute left here so are people comfortable staying on the weekly meeting schedule i think at some point we'll have enough work to do as subgroups that um we may want to skip a week or something and use that time another way to to do the work of the of the subgroups. Uh, I don't think we're quite there yet. So maybe by next week we can have the subgroups assigned, um, and then I guess we can decide then whether we want to skip a week uh, or whether we think it's valuable to keep on uh, just keep up the weekly drumbeat. Uh, and I think the next meeting's already scheduled, right, Dan? Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay, well, in the last minute that we have anything people want to make sure we touch base on, we will make sure we get something to you so you can express your preferences in terms of working group. Yeah, I think I, I was just going to say, Tom, I think that would be helpful for us to be able to have a more of a conversation after we have a little bit more time to think about it. So then we can really, as we're even looking at these different subgroups, then we can have a collective conversation as to really what the expectations might be within each one of those groups. I think that'll be helpful next when we have that on Wednesday. So once we can kind of have a little bit more time to ruminate. Good, sounds good. And I, I think again, in the spirit of not reinventing the wheel, uh, I think we'll try to find in existing documents, what we consider to be sort of a best practice, look at you know, new revenue source identification, you know, all the different things we've just talked about. So um, uh, I think as we, as we dig into it, I think we'll find places that we think have done a particularly good job that'll give us a good running head start. Okay. Um, thank you, Jeremy, for taking notes. Uh, I appreciate that. Any, uh, any other comments for the group here before we break? Okay, why don't we adjourn for now and uh, thanks everyone for your time and thanks Erica for doing such a nice job updating the outline. And we will uh, in our next meeting be focusing on getting right into the work. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.